16th, 2020, 2021 uh, order extending certain provisions of the open meeting law, uh, Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 18, and an extension to allow for remote participation until July 15th, 2022. The um, April 15th, 2022 Charter Review Committee meeting will be conducted via remote participation by the committee. Uh, Everyone, um, this meeting is being recorded and Jessica um, will be recording the Zoom meeting and taking our minutes. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, welcome all. Um, thank you all for your willingness to, to serve on the committee. I know we have, uh, Peter and I have done this before. Can you believe it's been 10, 11 years, Peter? I know, it, I can't, I really can't. Um, Chris and I have had uh, some preliminary discussions about, um, um, how we want to do this, but let's first start off by just introducing ourselves um, uh, for the members of the public. Um, my name is Paul Fitzgerald. I live on um, Birch Tree Lane in Westwood. I'm, happy, I'm a member of the Library Board of Trustees, um, and I am an attorney by profession, and presently I chair the Massachusetts, uh, Commonwealth Massachusetts Board of Review, and I served on the uh, prior Charter Commission, and I'm happy to serve again. Uh, Peter, do you want to go next? Sure. Uh, Peter Cahill, uh, 53 Warwick Drive in Westwood, uh, also attorney by profession, and uh, um, have been uh, in Westwood. I'm a newbie in Westwood, I think, since 2000, so re relatively new in Westwood by Westwood standards. Uh, and uh, no, 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 Westwood standards <laughs> have changed. Very, very okay. Now. Okay. Uh, so uh, anyway, delighted to be uh, to be uh, part of the commission. Thank you, um, John. Hello, everybody. Uh, John Lochnane. Thank you for inviting me to participate uh, on this commission. I live at seventy four Sterling Road. I've been in town probably about thirty years uh, or so, but uh, it goes by quick. Um, Currently on the Youth and Family Services Board. I'm an attorney as well. Uh, full disclosure, my wife uh, is uh, an employee of the town and has been for quite some time. Uh, but I look forward to participating on this on this board, working with you all. Thank you. I'm Nancy. I'm Nancy Hyde. I'm at 15 Martingale Lane. And as of this year, I'm now 35 years in Westwood, which it's very hard for me to believe. I've served on a few boards in town and presently I'm on the board of assessors and, um, and the permanent building committee. So I'll be working on that for the upcoming Hanlon Deerfield combined school project. And uh, I'm really excited to be on this committee. I think we're in part a self-selection committee. It's not high glamor for a lot of people but it's really important work. And I think um, I'm looking forward to working with all of you and our ex officio members. And thanks to the select board for appointing all of us. And we do have um, our three ex officio members. Um, the first ex officio member is uh, town clerk Dottie Powers. Dottie, welcome. If you want to say anything. Oh, I think you muted. Hi, uh, thank you for having me. I've been the town clerk since 2007, a resident for 27 years. And I was part of the Charter Review Committee over 10 years ago. So I'm looking forward to working with you all again. Thank you, thank Dottie. You. And thank you for your time. And our other official member is uh, Town Council, Pat Ahern. Yeah, good afternoon, Pat Ahern, Town Council. Um, uh, I've been in town a long time. My wife is a townie. So the first time I ran for the select board, I told people I was a townie by marriage. Uh, so I will, I will claim senior statesman of this group by marriage. Uh, and uh, I thank you for inviting me to participate. Well, we, we thank you for giving us your time in this, uh, Pat. We know you'll play an important role as the town council in, in helping to guide us. And the last ex officio member is the town administrator, Chris Coleman. Yes, my name is Christopher Coleman. I'm the town administrator. I'm proudly serving for a little over two and a half years now. Thank you. Thank you. 
Um, one of the items we wanted to discuss was the structure of the committee. And, and as I said, Chris and I had a preliminary discussion and he thought it might be a good idea to have a co-chair because I'm a library trustee and also I serve as assistant town moderator and it may happen that if something comes up at a town meeting that I may need to be either assisting as assistant town moderator or, or something that um, the, as library trustee, uh, it may be uh, um, useful to have a co-chair. Are you still thinking along those lines, Chris? Yes, so I, I'm happy if there's anybody who would, who would like to do that. Um, I'm happy to, to uh, make that are you, accept, are you accepting nominations? <laughs> if someone will accept, yes, somebody could propose a name, John, but I'm not going to uh, accept the nomination unless the nominee agrees to accept the nomination. <laughs> Do you have somebody you'd like to suggest? Well, my good friend Peter, I know, has done this uh, in the past. <laughs> and although I'd be willing to serve as co-chair, I, I really... Um, uh, I don't have the experience that Peter has. So um, I don't know if anybody else uh, wants to step into that role, uh, Nancy or, or Peter, but uh, I would defer. Uh, I, I would de I defer a self-nomination unless uh, Ooh, either or they would like to step up. Peter, would you be willing to do it? Peter, you're muted. <laughs> Thanks, Pat. Sorry about that, Pat. Uh, I would be happy to, Nancy, if you uh, would prefer, that's fine too. But uh, <laughs> oh yeah, that's awkward. <laughs> no, no, I, I, no, I would be happy to, but I don't want to. Uh, if you have it, so, sure, I'd be happy to. It so. It appears we have a consensus candidate. Does anybody? That's fine. Then, then, um, Peter. Welcome, I would ask you to, to assist as co-chair. Sure, my Thank pleasure. Um, in terms of the structure of the committee, Chris, you wanna talk about what sort of resources we have and, and you know how you'd like to, to see us proceed? Sure, uh, well, you certainly have uh, access to all three ex officio members. Um, and you know, we have Jessica, we have Tish here. Uh, but one of the things I want to discuss with the committee is, is doing, uh, speaking with Dottie, um, in, in the past, uh, the last time we had special uh, counsel to the committee, and um, one of the things is, and I believe it was Attorney Lauren Goldberg that served um, the committee about 11 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, Attorney Goldberg also has recently served, well, in my time, my tenure here, within the two and a half years, has served as special counsel for one particular matter. Um, she is available if the committee would like um, to consider her. Under the procurement laws, uh, legal services is something that is exempt from our procurement laws. That doesn't mean that we don't have to procure. We can, uh, but we also we have the option not to. If the committee is so inclined, I could certainly share with you um, Attorney Goldberg's resume. And if this is something the committee would like to do, we could certainly bring Attorney Goldberg in, meet with the committee. If the committee is satisfied um, with her background and um, any questions that you, you have for her, we could certainly pursue a contract with Attorney Goldberg. If the committee would prefer to go out, um, you can certainly do that as well. So those would be the two options. Um, I would, if the committee is inclined, I, I think having Attorney Goldberg in before the committee, having a discussion with her uh, may serve fruitful. Um, and again, there's no, uh, there's nothing binding the committee or the town to having her serve as special counsel, but it may be a way if the committee is satisfied that we can really begin uh, doing a lot of work uh, with that special liberty, with that special counsel, excuse me. Um, I, uh, just for the record, uh, I know Peter, I noticed this from the last time. I, I was uh, once employed at the same firm that Attorney Goldberg was uh, at, uh, Copeland and Page, but I have not been there in 14 years now. Uh, I think you clear the ethics statute on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I do, but I just want to say that for the record. I do know Attorney Goldberg, and, and uh, I'm, uh, I have a high regard for her um, knowledge and skill, and I know she was of great assistance to us um, the last time we, we retained her. So I, I would have no problem with that. Um, we, if, unless anybody has any other thoughts, we could invite her to come. Just, just a question for Chris. Um, we know that we'd be getting her and not a designee. 
you're on mute. That's a great question, Nancy. And I did um, reach out to attorney, attorney Goldberg. I did specify uh, that if, if the committee was so inclined, the committee would be looking to hire her for her services. Right. Um, and she completely understood that. And that would be, we'd be hiring attorney, attorney Goldberg. So she and just as a, an observer um, from the select board during the last process and uh, her other work um, periodically for the town, I think that it's, she would make a lot of sense. Um, it would provide us having Paul and Peter on this committee some continuity from the last committee um, and, and you folks and the others who were on the committee then did a huge amount of work. And so having that continuity to this group, I think would benefit us tremendously. Um, so if uh, I'm seeing John nod and if, um, if the other three members are, or are the two members because I heard Paul already, if you guys are so inclined, what I could do is for the next meeting that we're gonna have, I can see if she's available for that meeting and have her join. Um, and then the committee can uh, will certainly forward to you her resume so you have that information in your packet yeah. and um, can have a discussion with her. And if the committee um, is, is satisfied with attorney girl work, we can move forward. And if not, then we'll move forward with the RFP process. I've got to imagine this is still a line of work they do a lot of. She, this is something that she is very um, uh, experienced in. Yeah. Um, um, for herself. Um, and also, I think uh, because of her involvement in this work with other communities, um, there are some other resources that she has available to her from. Yeah, that sounds great. I, I think that's a smart, um, I think that's a smart approach. And it's, it's not even just a matter of convenience. Well, let's bring in the assistance that the committee had last time. It's she was very valuable and uh, extremely helpful. And I think it'll be an asset to this group. But uh, I, I like the approach of let's um, invite her in and, and then the, the full current committee can um, form their own opinion and, um, and assess that too. So uh, I think that's a smart approach. So, so Chris, will you facilitate that when we set a yes, next one? Happy to do so. Thank you. Um, the, the process. And Peter, I'll ask you to weigh in on this as well, and Dottie, since we went through this the last time. Um, what we did the last time is we obviously spent time ourselves looking at the charter, um, identifying the areas of the charter that seemed outmoded at the time. Um, there were some things we still, I think, had, in, had an executive secretary, as I recall, rather than he even, uh, the, the post being even the town administrator. Um, we, we spoke with, um, with the town administrator and some of the leaders of the various boards for areas that they thought um, needed us to look at and what sort of best practices were going on in the municipal community. After we had identified some of those um, areas, we had, I think, at least three listening sessions. I recall, Peter, is it three that we had? We just invited members of various boards to come and, and town officials and members of various boards to come and speak to us about you know their a particular field and what uh, any thoughts they had on it. And um, we then uh, sort of sketched out what we thought the changes should be, what areas we thought um, we should modify. I think that one of the biggest things we did the last charter was we actually created the municipal finance department. Uh, we did we had not had that in the prior charter. And then we, um, with Lauren, uh, attorney Goldberg's help, we came up with a draft. Um, and we presented it to the selectmen and then um, to the town meeting and uh, we, and then ultimately went for a special act of the legislature too. And then followed that up with a election, as I recall. So yeah. I, we also had some public um, meetings yeah. too, for the public just to go through yeah. it before we and went we did, And we appeared before the, what was then the Warren Commission, which we renamed the Warren, no, finance. the finance commission. finance commission. Yeah, I know you named it. Yeah, right now. finance commission. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I would think we'd want to uh, follow a similar procedure this time. I did ask Chris to, at at least at this meeting, give us some of his thoughts as to areas that he would like us to think about. And then what I would suggest is that we um, go back and look at the charter ourselves and and um, start moving in that regard. Yeah. So um, just a, a thought, Paul, and, and maybe maybe this is implicit in what you said. 
Um, before doing the listening sessions, um, might we have the opportunity as a group to go through the charter you know, we're we get. from Chris yeah, and talk really through good. where are the things that we're already aware need our attention, not necessarily action. And so then we're more informed with our questions when we actually speak to people who come before us. Um, we might have more of an understanding of where this group is thinking matters of review are important. And then we can see if there are other people who agree or say that's not the point. Really, the issue is something else, you know, whether it be something like the Finance Commission, they may say, no, that's that's not the issue we have. We really have an issue with whatever, you know, for instance, the number of members, you know, that kind of thing, or, or we need more structure or whatever. Um, so as long as we have time before those listening sessions. Um, that's what we did the last time, Nancy. We spent, as I recall, several meetings just going through the charter ourselves. Okay, great. Identifying areas like, you know, what should be elected, what should be appointed, terms of office, as we discussed. And we had Mike at all of those meetings, and he was giving us the benefit of, of his experience. We talked to Tom, and then we sort of present, we talked, that's when we had the listening session. Great. So we, okay. Then you know. I like, I like that. That sounds very helpful. And I think Dottie, would you have uh, like records from the last time? Minutes. Share with us. Yes. So the next meeting, I can I can get all of that together, the dates, the timelines. Right. Yeah. I'm doing this from recollection. I think I have it right, Peter, don't I? Yeah. Yes. I mean, it, the the number was pretty extensive, uh, and it was a pretty systemic approach with canvassing the departments of the town. It was not. I'm not saying you said this. It wasn't just that we asked a few people. We asked all of the boards. Yes. Yeah. And we did a survey um, that we sent to them to have uh, elicit some response in writing to get see if yeah. that resulted in some uh, some thoughts or observations. Um, and um, I, I would um, encourage a, a, a that we that we develop our uh, overall sort of approach on how we would like to go about it. And it's, I think it's consistent with what. Paul sketched out, but I, I, I would want to be, I would encourage us to be methodical about it and, um, you know, have a, have a, a, a period of time where we're doing our own thinking and assessment of, of uh, the charter and issues that we might know about and then and go through, um, see what we can uh, discern and glean from other, others that have experience living in the, within the structure and working within the structure and, and then eventually having open public sessions, eliciting any other input from the town, from uh, any from a, anybody. It was pretty. It was it was very comprehensive. I hesitate to say the number, but I think it was close to thirty sessions that we had um, over a couple of years. I'm not saying that we need to hit that yeah. number, of course, but it was it was pr very comprehensive. I, I thought. Well, it had been, I don't know how many years since the last charter update had occurred. I think. I think there was um, definitely a, a deficit position going into the last review that that work is probably something we can leverage off of versus where you had to start last time. I, I see, I'm sorry, John wanted to say something. John. Yeah, I, and I don't wanna get bogged down in, in details necessarily, but um, I'm just curious if there's a recollection from 10 years ago, was there some sort of matrix or Excel spreadsheet or some, uh, you know, how, how did you track sort of ideas, thoughts, progress, status, you know, resolution? Was there some sort of master doc document or template for that? We, we that did. sounds like it would have been wonderful to have. I'm not sure that there was a master, but I do recall we had ongoing minutes and we kept yeah. kept a record of as as we went along. So. It might not be distilled down in that in a you know in in a very brief document, but I would say the materials are to the extent we have a, a, an archive of it. Would they would? Be I there. like what John's suggesting, though. Mm -hmm. And we actually did. We had, um, you know, we had the prior bylaws and char the charter with the bylaws together. We had a book. I don't know if you all recall. It was pretty old, but 
we had that and we just went section by section. Yeah, I mean, so, obviously, yeah. technology has, has changed a lot. I'm sorry to interrupt. But, nope. um, you know, technology has changed a lot in the last decade, and there are some collaboration tools at work, and we may want to give some thought. And maybe the attorney the outside counsel has some thoughts as to what may work for other groups as well. So I could see some value in that. Mm -hmm. Pat, I'm sorry to interrupt. No, my uh, uh, so my memory is is that the last Charter Commission was working on about a 20 year deficit. Uh, it had been a long time since we had looked at the charter comprehensively. And so there was, I, I think there was some makeup work to do. And, and that, that commission actually mandated a change in the charter that the charter be reviewed every 10 years, if I remember correctly. And we're a little bit behind schedule now, but not, not terribly. We're socially uh, behind schedule on this one. I think we're about 12 years out. So uh, that's my memory anyway. Uh, so, um, so that's just the background that I wanted to throw in. You know, I remember, Peter, you doing such an outstanding job in meeting with the public and, you know, holding those sessions that were closer to delivery to the town meeting. But I think um, the kind of tool that John's suggesting it would be very good to develop now in order to have that communication vehicle down the road. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I know you guys tracked it because you were very thorough, um, but to be able to, you know, by category, because we have all the numbers of the sections and everything else that we could set up some kind of system. So I, you know, Lauren may have a tool like that, or we just have to, I think, be cognizant of not violating open meeting mm -hmm. when and, we do and that. I, and I also think that we do have our bylaws, our charter is on ECODE, and mm -hmm. we're able to get the sections that we want, we can put those into some sort of spreadsheet. So we can definitely, with the program we have, we are going to be able to take bits and pieces and sections, just like you're talking, John. And I think that's going to be very helpful too. Dottie, why don't you explain what Code 360 is for this group? I'm not sure they understand. So what that is, is that's our our charter and general bylaws. So what happened, so probably in 2000 and I started in seven, so in, in 10 is when I recodified the bylaws and we had a company that took a look at the bylaws and the charter that we currently had. They put them in an electronic format. You know, they put a new book together for us. Some people still like the hard copies. And so every year, that there is a change to the bylaws, we it gets codified. So every year, whatever changes, whatever gets voted on at town meeting goes into the paper code and goes into the online code. The online code, as I spoke, Chris and I were looking at it today, there's a lot that we can do. There's a lot of tools. We can actually go in and see what other communities have, what their charter looks like, their bylaws, you know, we can get some ideas. There's, there's just so much that we can do with this program. It's, it's really utilizing it. And I talked to General Code, who is the company that does this for us, and they're willing to do a 10 minute training just to familiarize everybody with the code and just what you can do, you know, on the back end that I think is gonna help the group. So Dottie, could you at the next meeting sort of do a presentation on the technology? What, what? Yes. And how it would work and how we could use it? Yeah, definitely. That would be helpful if you and Chris would, would work on that. And then obviously in the meantime, if, if, if Lauren is, a, is aware of any uh, new technologies that the communities are using, because I think, I think John and Peter and Nancy make an excellent point that we should have a roadmap of, you know, how, how would, we're going to use Absolutely. It. And, and I think a lot of the communities that Lauren does work with all have the same, or they go with um, general code and they have the e-code as well. And if you could also share with us to the extent, you know, the sort of the timelines and the things that we used the last time, that would be very helpful. Yes, definitely. Okay. Um, Chris, did you have any initial thoughts at the outset? From, from what you, now that you've been here for a year and a half and, and sort of- Two and a half. 
He's he's a vet too. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Peter told me earlier today <laughs> that I'm a vet now. Um, I do have some thoughts. Um, some of them may be, um, let's say, some challenging thoughts for the committee or for others to hear who either are watching or will watch uh, this. But just as, um, so there's some, one of the things I, I really want to do is I really want to just focus on um, two things. One, I want to ask a question for clarification. Does the committee want department heads to attend their meetings to share their thoughts directly to the committee? Or would you like me to solicit the department heads to provide something in writing regarding their suggestions and share that with the committee? I think last time we did both. We did a survey, but when we had our sessions, they, they did come. I'm trying to remember. Do you remember, Peter? Did, yeah, we had, yeah, there was, there was the, um, the survey in advance and then I am pretty sure we had each of the heads we, they were each invited and I think most of them came um, I'll be able to have more detail on that for the next one I apologize I should have had it all uh, um, you know at my fingertips to be able to tell you exactly um, it's it's helpful Chris I, I think to be able to have a little bit of dialogue in, with um, with folks that are in that um, of the heads that have to live uh, and work under the uh, the structure that we have in place. And so, um, while again a written response could be and is useful, it it may be um, that the and I think it's helpful that the a live uh, discussion might be of some benefit to our our committee. So, so, so hearing that, could I suggest that? Um, if the committee is okay with this, I can ask the department heads to prepare something in writing so the committee can read it, uh, understand it, digest the, that information, and then we can have the department heads come in and talk about their proposals. Would that be something that would work? Yeah, it might be good to have questions, prompts to them to respond to versus something open-ended. Yeah, and I think that was the point of, the, of a survey that we had okay. we had agreed upon. So, so and, and maybe this could, this could sort of address it if, we collectively um, have a, a written um, a set of questions, as Nancy's saying, that could help prompt and prod the the, the heads to think about what what we're focused on. Um, in addition to any of other things that they might have to add, but it might help um, narrow and be a little more specific in the thinking of what we're looking for. I'm I'm happy to share with it. We have a department heads meeting next week. I can certainly just share with the department heads something is going to be coming. Um, yeah. as far as a survey, um, but uh, encourage them to start to review the charter uh, it, yeah. to make some notes and, and, and respond to that survey to provide the committee with some information and then also to be expected to attend um, to attend a meeting. They're, they will be invited to a meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I can actually uh, look in the archives, Chris, to see if I can pull up the questionnaire we used oh, from be before. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah, I just found it. Did you find it? Yeah. Great. So, um, so again, some of this may be a challenging uh, to talk about, um, but I, I think this is an opportunity to look at not just where we are now, but going forward 10 plus years on where the town is gonna be in the, in the charter and the rules uh, for the governance. One of the, uh, two of the things that are really challenging in the current form of government. So yes, Peter, Paul, you acknowledge the finance, the creation of the finance department. Um, yes. And as some of you may know, our, our long time uh, finance director, assistant town administrator um, is gonna be retiring in October. So Pam Dukeman is gonna be retiring after 30 plus years of service to the town. Um, huge shoes to fill. Um, we will certainly do our best to, to fill them. If we can fill one shoe, we're gonna be great. So <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see how that works. But one of the challenges as we're looking to um, plan the search for her successor is we have a finance department and in many other communities, it's really challenging when you have an elected treasurer, an elected collector, and then a finance director, because it's the structure, that's a very uncommon structure. Um, so one of the things I would suggest, uh, or at least from my standpoint for the committee is to discuss um, the, the elected town treasurer and the elected town collector position. Um, I think, and we also, I have some information that Pam did share with me that there are more and more communities that are that have the appointed position. This will also benefit the community in two purposes. Uh, one would be for retention, but also recruitment. 
So as we're looking for what we know is uh, Pam's successor, this is something that we could talk about during the interviews if, if the committee is inclined to look at this. But also when we're looking at the positions within the finance department, when you're going out and you're doing searches, where we'd be looking for like a treasurer slash collector or an assistant treasurer collector type position versus the, the positions that we're looking for now. We've extremely qualified and in some many cases overqualified members of our finance department um, that could certainly fill these roles that I'm talking about. Uh, I'm not saying that we'd have to go out and find new people to fill those positions. We have extremely qualified people to fill those positions, but those would be two areas where I would suggest to the committee that that might be something to look at. Um, uh, the quorum for town meeting is something that um, 175 people, um, as, as many of you may recall, um, during the first town meeting of COVID in May of 2020, uh, thanks to the effort of town council who got an injunction against ourselves <laughs> so we could reduce the quorum um, because we did not know what was gonna happen. Um, we also had the town's first outdoor town meeting um, we did have the quorum reduced to 25%. And Pat, is that 80? 45. 45, 45 residents? It's actually 44, but we went to, with 45. We rounded up, yes. Um, and just, it's just a, a point of clarification, the quorum is the minimum number. We're not saying we're putting a cap on the maximum. We just want to make sure that we have the significant number of people to conduct the town's business. Um, and that would be something that um, for, the, for the committee to discuss. Chris, in line with that, I'm sorry. Chris, may, may I pipe in for a minute? Oh, there are some communities around us that don't have a quorum at all for their town meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Bellingham is one of them. Uh, no quorum. Yeah, you, literally, you, do they default to whoever's present represents the quorum? Yep. Zero yep. quorum. Yeah, we. And this is a, this is a great issue and was discussed and assessed, and we should do that again. Um, just some other things under the quorum or under town. Um, town meeting that is, if the committee wants to discuss um, instead of an open town meeting, do you want a representative town meeting or is the committee interested uh, of talking about a town council form of government? Uh, those are just three things under the form of government uh, that have come up. The, and I have had conversations with the moderator, um, the FinCom members, the number of FinCom members is 15, is a challenging number to fill all those seats. Um, so uh, we can certainly hear from the moderator on, on something on that, whether that's the right number or if a different number uh, is something that he would like to discuss. Um, the, uh, the, we have, a, a, I believe in the, is it the chair of the bylaws where we have the fire chief contract for five years? Uh, it's in the bylaws. Uh, the bylaws. Okay, so forgive me. Um, we have, um, so for example, we have under library trustees, we have a board of six library trustees. As we know right now, this committee comp is comprised of four people currently. Um, an even number can be a challenge when you're voting, especially if you have a split vote. That means um, all that deliberation, all that time, and all that energy that go goes into something, you may not have a decision. Um, so that may be something to discuss, to review, to make sure that we have an odd number, uh, whether that's five, whether that's seven, whatever that number is for any of those committees to make sure we have an odd number of voting members. Uh, the, and there are some things that um, thankful uh, for Paul and his leadership, along with the trustees, uh, that the trustees have voted uh, to allow certain things to happen um, and, and to maybe update that within the charter. One of the things that the trustees um, worked with us on is the custodians that were under the director. Uh, for the library and now under our facilities director. Um, and maybe we would just look to update some of the language in the charter to reflect that. Um, mm -hmm. Some other things that I just quickly noted. Um, I've heard from some residents um, regarding uh, the Council on Aging and some of the language um, under the Council on Aging. He says, no member will be eligible for reappointment to a third term unless one year has elapsed uh, from one one year has elapsed from and after the expiration of that member's second full term uh, and um, and that members shall serve without compensation some some residents have said that might be language that the committee would consider for other appointed uh, bodies uh, 
Um, one other thing, um, or a couple of other things, that we have some dollar amounts in the charter. Um, so for example, um, under the town administrator, I have the, the, the word version has it as a Roman numeral, so I do apologize. Um, but it talks about the procurement officer, the town administrator shall serve as a procurement officer under chapter 30B. Um, however, any contract over 100,000 shall require the approval of the select board. Um, unfortunately, expenses uh, in certain matters, many of the services that we're, we're working with and some of the, and many of the contracts uh, that we need to um, uh, execute are gonna be over $100,000. And again, looking at it from 2022 and going forward for another 10 years, I would certainly encourage the committee to look at that, um, that dollar amount of increasing that dollar amount uh, to something that would be um, more in keeping with today's expenses and costs for projects. Um, some other things, um, the charter references a town bulletin board. We may want to look at that as more of like the town website um, to make sure we do certain things of that. We have an emergency management director that is designated as the town administrator. Um, my, my suggestion to the committee would be to have that more of an open-ended appointment that the select board could decide who would be the best fit for that role whether it's the town administrator, it could be the fire chief, it could be the police chief, but really provide that opportunity for the select board to apply that or appoint that role to the most appropriate person that we have on our team at the time. Um, some other things to consider, um, for example, the uh, finance committee warrant booklet. Um, we mail that out to 5,200 households and we ask residents who attend town meeting to bring that book with them. It's a great source of information. Um, it's expensive to produce. It takes um, so a few weeks to actually get that information finalized, get it to the printer and mail it. Um, something for the committee to consider is um, if that's something that would go online, we would still be able to print some versions of that. We could have that available at the Council on Aging. We could have that available here at Town Hall if people wanted a hard copy, but we wouldn't be producing the 5,200 or actually more than 5,200, but mailing it to 5,200 households that we would have it available on the website. And I say that because some of our experiences that we've had with three outdoor town meetings um, have been, we've, we've learned a lot. And um, I think the communities have certainly adapted to a number of things that we've initiated where we, did, we didn't have certain presentations and some, present, um, some presentations that we had at, at the last two town meetings, um, the annual town meeting, the special town meeting, presentations were pre-recorded, and that's also what we're gonna be doing this year pre-recording the presentations to allow residents the opportunity to see the presentations prior to town meeting, but they will also be played at town meeting. Um, so again, so I don't know where the committee was in, in the technology back um, when this was being discussed regarding Wi-Fi, but our certain Wi-Fi capabilities have certainly improved over the years. And so certain, we could certainly have people have their smartphones, have tablets, have um, other electronic devices that would be able to connect to the internet that could they could then read that information online. But we do understand that we do have some residents that do prefer that booklet and we could still have that booklet printed, uh, but just not in the, the, the number or the quantity that we currently have. And then also with that added expense of having a mail every household. Um, that's something I did talk to some team members about. Um, and that would also provide us with a little bit more information, uh, just a little more information on that. We have a conflict between the charter and the bylaw when that book is supposed to be mailed. Uh, we have one that says 30 days and we have another one that says seven days. So we would certainly like to also um, make sure that, that those two, the bylaw and the charter reflect the, the, the same time frame, whatever that time frame is gonna end up being. Those are just a couple of thoughts, so. When we're thinking about all this, uh, and Chris, you were touching on a couple of things and I don't, I don't wanna, I don't want to dive into the weeds now. I think that was great overview, but are we able to think of um, a way to write to update the charter where it puts, um, refers things to the bylaws, which are more easily updated between the 10 years of a charter update? So I'll, what I'm trying to say is something like um, technology having changed a lot in the past 12 years, 
charter to me doesn't necessarily seem like the place to talk about the mechanics of how town meeting materials are delivered, but the bylaws may be. And what we know today will evolve over the next 10 years. Um, you know, a lot of people call for, for instance, uh, the ability to vote, participate remotely at town meeting, which I don't think the state has conquered that. I'm not sure state, town, whatever, but I'm just, you know, should we, I guess we should, I guess I'm proposing we should be thinking about how to do things where it gives the town the ability to do reasonable updates between charter reviews that are much, you know, a large gap of time. So I guess point. that's where Lauren comes in and can be very helpful. Yeah, no, that's a great, that's a great point. Where she can craft things or help us craft them too. And I think the issue lies with it's, um, it's in the Finance and Work Commission recommendation where it's, it's actually 14 days prior to town meeting. But then when we did the bylaw review, we, I believe this is where we made an amendment to the deadline for delivery of the Warrant mm -hmm. Commission booklet and it was seven days. And regardless of what happens, um, failure to do so would not invalidate the town meeting. So I, I think what we really, what's really important for you to look at too, is that what's in your charter is consistent with the bylaws. You don't want yeah. the bylaws and the charter to have, you know, two different sets of, of timelines. So it, that's another, you know, thing, just make sure everything's consistent. And after we did the charter review, we then immediately did a bylaw review. Yeah, yes. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. In some ways, I mean, when you guys were doing the work last time, were you holding the two documents together as you went through the stuff? So we can do that this time and, and help avoid the conflicts or think about where something doesn't really belong in the charter but should go into the bylaws. Yeah. I, I don't want to sort of officially comment, you know, say that this was the official commission uh, opinion of that prior group, but we we knew that there were other, I, some of these items, there was an overlap of items in the bylaws. And I think there was some hesitancy to, you know, usurp and expand what we were trying to do. And it, I think it seemed um, a comprehensive enough challenge to update the charter. I think mm -hmm. then doing the bylaws at the same time was too, too daunting. Too expansive. Yeah. yeah. And that's why we did the bylaw review committee right away. After. Yeah, and I remember that. I just think that there are no I, me, the charter shouldn't be the um, administrative component. Right. It's a great that's I think I think, I think I think the point, you know, the concept throughout ought to be right to the extent that there's something that's addressed, maybe touched in the charter and touched in the bylaw, can it can they coexist in a in a in a way that the bylaw is able to um, address it or be, uh, yeah, uh, you know, address, yeah, and so, so so that we don't we're not stuck with an inconsistency and until yeah. the next update. So the chart is kind of the floor, the bylaws are the ceiling. And, and you want to also make sure you know because the bylaws are much easier to change by a vote of town meeting. Yes, but uh, Peter was right because we were up uh, the. The focus in the chart, as, as somebody alluded to, we hadn't done it in 20, 25 years. And just bringing it into the 21st century. If I'm not mistaken, it had been that long since the Charter Commission worked on it, but that didn't pass. So I think it was even longer since the Charter was, was actually tough. updated. There was a lot of antiquity <laughs> yeah. in, in that Charter. Uh, even like I said, like exactly. It was great work that was done. My my comments are at, not at all critical of the work. Oh no, just um, thinking about how we oh. might be able to do it this time. And we did we did talk about the elected uh, and as opposed to appointed town treasurer and collector. And at the time, it wasn't as uh, as pressing an issue because um, they all had, were working so well together. It, it was working so well together that Pam was really able to coordinate the efforts, but I can see Chris's point that you can't guarantee that that's gonna happen. No. And you can't guarantee that you get somebody qualified to right. become elected, um, you know, cause they're very um, deep, they're professional skills right. that go into doing those jobs. And we've got to make sure that we have professional people in those roles or define them accordingly. Chris, did you have, I mean, you know, 
Dottie, close your ears. Um, do we have anything about the, the uh, handling of the town clerk as well? I mean, you were talking about maybe something's not being elected. And so that's an area we need to look into too, isn't it? We certainly could. Yes, no doubt. I would um, certainly talk to, we can- I mean, obviously we we'll get Dottie's in. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. Well, one thing that you said, Chris, that's intriguing to me as a challenge is, um, you know, trying to think about what it'll be like 10 years from now. Is there any um, resources that you could direct our way? Um, planning, you know, regional planning or um, projections that might be helpful to us in terms of population or anything that could sort of make us be thinking about what 10 years from now, I, I, I know that- I can certainly know, think about that. I, mean, I, can certainly, I know we, the schools have some school age populations as far as projections. And Donnie, I don't know if we have any projections for the census. Um, MAPC one might one have information. On that one, but <laughs> that would- uh, Yeah, Chris, MAPC may have information yeah. on- Yeah. Forecasted right. yeah. population. We, we actually, I could get you that too. It's in the, um, all the federal census numbers are out and they've got all kinds of great tools at forecasting and any other information that you might need. Yeah. So for everybody's talking about expanding the boundaries of the town though, right? <laughs> no, but you may hear about um, uh, uh, precinct representation on the board of selectmen. That came up the last month. No, oh, that's been brought up. Yeah, yeah. or expanding oh. the board of selectmen <laughs> yeah. and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I just would encourage an open mind to to yeah. the different topics, and um, yeah. So let me do this. Um, let me just talk about the action items, and then we can talk about when we want to meet again. So what I have for action items is um, having uh, reaching out to Lauren, right? Yes. With the next meeting, I have Dottie and uh, sending us uh, archival material to review so we have a sense of what the process was the last time. And I also have Dottie and Chris um, working to sort of give us a sense of what technology would be available to us in terms of tracking and, and you know, having things on spreadsheets and things like that, right? And, any, and obviously any material that would be helpful to us as we think about a 10 year yep. uh, time frame. Paul, Paul, and this is maybe a stupid question, but the uh, and maybe the outside council has the answer. But does the Mass Municipal Association, or does, or is there any group that sort of has like model bylaws or keep track of you know issue by issue mm -hmm. developments? Is there some sort of standard of uh, you know governing Mass Municipality in, on this? chatter issue that we know of or there, there are some resources at what's called the uh, mass municipal lawyers association mmla i will uh, i'll try and get into their library and see if they can identify some resources that may be of assistance to us and you can also reach out to mass municipal association i think we did get some materials from them the last time but they i don't know if they focus on charter they focus more on policy and legislation, but certainly wouldn't hurt to ask them. And Lauren may well have yeah. centralized information because I think she has had a number of clients. Right. In yeah, I think that's, that's one of her biggest um, fortes is yeah. working with charters and even the attorney general's office, I'm sure, mm -hmm. has information as well. Because I know a lot of times we'll be asked questions or, you know, when you're in the, um, communicating out to the public mode, who else does it like this? What right. are the towns? Um, why, why would we want to change? And we'll want to talk about trends, just like what Chris, you were saying that Pam was talking about. Our current structure may be uh, antiquated for the finance department, elected officials versus a department head. So we'll definitely need to understand what's going on in other areas as it relates to our organizational structure, which translates into elements of the charter. I, um, or I should say co-chairs. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, 
I don't believe this happened. I'm not looking to embarrass anyone, but we still, we do have two other people who are part of this meeting that I just want to make sure that the committee is aware of who they are and what their roles are. Uh, okay. And if that's okay with you, I'd just like to have uh, Tish sure. and Jessica just Appreciate introduce you. themselves. I apologize, sure. I could have done this earlier. Um, mm -hmm. Who so, are you and why are you here? <laughs> Tish um, and then Jessica, I'll turn it over to you. Uh, if you want to go first. I'll be fine. I'm Tish I work for the town of Westwood. I am an assistant to the town administrator here for admin support with Jessica. Awesome. Um, Jessica you. Cole. I'm also a trustee with Paul. And uh -huh. uh, for a few more days, I, right? I right. will not be I will not be re-upping. Sorry. Um, I also take the minutes for the planning board and the permanent building committee. And I've and been living in Westwood for 23 years. <laughs> and the trustee board will have to place you on the trustees too, as, a, yeah. as our secretary. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you both. Um, um, Tisha's nickname is the glue. So she's the one that holds us all together. So. <laughs> she holds the whole place together, huh? Yes. So given the action items, <laughs> what do we want to do? What, in terms of next meeting, it's we're going to have a lot of material, I think, to digest. Um, I'm open to and then digest, yeah. If I can suggest, maybe the committee can identify two dates now, uh, mm -hmm. so we always have the next date, um, so we can put that on the schedule. And I can use those two dates uh, to speak with Attorney Attorney Goldberg regarding her availability. Um, and I also want to just be mindful, as Jessica said, she's she's. Uh, a jack of many trades, <laughs> um, working for, uh, do, doing different things for different committees. So I just wanna make sure that our dates also uh, provide her an opportunity to uh, fulfill her other responsibilities, taking that as far as the boards and the committees. Okay. Uh, yes, when we have Jessica and, and Tish, are they, are you both intending to be in present at all meetings or is it so there's backup if one person can't make it? What's the um, expectation? Uh, so Jessica is, is recording the minutes um, and, and running and also running, you know, working with Tish on scheduling the meeting. Um, but I think Tish is also going to be helping me and, and Pat and Dottie do a number. Okay, of got it. That's where the blue comes in. So <laughs> well, keeping I'm, them all on task too, right? Yes. I'm mindful we have the town election, right? So I know that our town clerk will be um, busy on that on the 26th, isn't it, Dottie? The 26th. And town meeting is scheduled for when? May 2nd. May 2nd. So I it, it probably would behoove us to do it after that so that we don't, I know you, Dottie and Chris and the select, uh, you'll all be sort of focused on that the next month, I take it, right? I think that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but well, that, we'll, we'll, we'll also do to reorganize the select board on May 9th. May 9th, okay. But that wouldn't preclude you from at least getting the material to us in the next couple of weeks that we talked about? No, not at all. Okay. I'll work on that too. So do we want to, I, I mean, we could we could look to meet again the week after town meeting, the week of the ninth. I know that the selectmen are meeting on the ninth or, or the following week. The, the tenth would be okay with me, as, providing we don't have, Jessica, do you know if we have a planning board meeting on the tenth? You know, I don't think that Nora has scheduled the May planning board meetings yet because I don't have any. So they haven't scheduled since they were reordered. I do not believe so. Okay. Right. But we we may, just, Pat, just so you know, um, we may have to move the select board meeting date from the 9th to the 10th. Uh, I have to speak to a couple of members regarding that. We have a conflict. Okay. okay. Make sure that. So but the week of the 6th, with the week of May 16th, be a better week with all that? My only, I mean, are we trying to target a certain day of the week? Because that nope. starts nope. feeling like it's a long ways out from where we are today. It's only right. the fifth I'm now up. and I. Yeah. I, would, I mean, I just want to give the, everybody an opportunity to get past the election and the town meeting. We could do it that week of the 10th. Actually, the planning board does have a meeting too on the 12th. Of, of May? 12th of April. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait a yeah. second. I'm in April. Sorry. Planning that. board is Tuesdays. And what time are they usually starting, Jessica? 7 p.m. They're starting at 7, 7 o'clock. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about your availability, but are, are, was this a comfortable time to meet for people or is this not good for working schedules? Works for me. Works for me. Okay, for me. 
Yeah, yeah the only thing I don't know right now is when the permanent building committee is going to gear up. Um, That's right, because Nancy and I do that together. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I don't think, you know, I think, well, Jessica, then you can say, no, there's another meeting at that time. That's <laughs> so, you know, let's take the lead here. So do Absolutely. Wanna, do you want to say the 10th? Works for sure. me. No, the, the, the select board is meeting on the 10th. Oh, the 10th. All right. The well, we may be meeting on the 10th. That's what we have to, we have to figure yeah. out. But uh, I, I think we can, I just don't know if we're going to meet at five or what about the 11th? The 11th. Want to do the 11th? Sure. At five again? Works for me. Yeah. So, um, not to be the skunk at the party, uh, for Tuesdays, this slot is good for the other days. It's less less good on my end. Wednesday, I could do later, but um, okay, five o'clock and stuff. Uh, five you want to do seven? Seven is can okay. I, can, maybe we can just, how about we hold on May 10th at 5 p.m.? Okay, and, and then, then I can let you know what the select board's going to do, and then if we need to make a change, we can then make a change. Does that work for the committee? Sure. Okay. Yeah, we'll be mindful of Peter's. Yeah, Peter's availability. And then do you want to pick Coach another baseball? I hope Peter. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah. I'm, I'm officially retired of that, Pat. Oh no. <laughs> but I. I do promise, I, I, I do, I don't promise, I do believe that some kids are going to be echoing, you know, hey, coach said, you know, you can control your attitude and effort, and that's about it, and uh, to their kids, and so I, I think I've said that so many times, somebody's going to repeat it in, in years in the future, so do you remember yeah. when we had that old guy, so. And John's on the same, same John's stuff, on right? the same, John's heard it, John's heard it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, do we want to uh, also try to target a second date, as Chris sure. had suggested? Sure. About a week later. 11th at 7 is a, I'm already committed at that time. Okay. Why don't we try a week later, the week of the 16th? Then we go back to, okay. Paul, I guess that's what we're going to have to do. Okay. The week of the 16th, what is the next meeting? So. The second one. The second. Yeah. Um, so I'm just, I just want to make sure. So you want to meet in consecutive weeks? No, we're well, trying to no I think we're trying to pick an alternative to, to okay, the so we'll pick an alternative to the tech. Is that oh, yes. to no, the I was tech. saying a second, doing? a second meeting too. Right. Yeah. So that's, this one I'm confused by. Yeah. Are so picking oh, a second sorry. meeting. Uh, it, so I would just, I just want to make sure that the committee understands that you're looking at your second meeting a week after your first meeting. No, no. I think okay. what Pat was suggesting is that if we can't do the 10th, that week of the 10th, who would, what we, would we do something the following? Is that what you're suggesting, Pat? You are? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so. Um, the 10th or the 17th? Yeah. For the next. Does that work? I have, an, I have a meeting with the assessors at 5.30 on the 17th. Okay. Which could change. I'm so sorry. I wasn't, you know, I didn't check beforehand. Can you somebody just... check? Can we. Can, can I make a suggestion? Can I make a suggestion? Sure. We'll, hold the, we'll hold, gonna the hold the 10th. We're going to hold the 10th at five o'clock. Mm -hmm. Make sure to see if that can work. And then maybe if we can get in the calendar and I'll just skip over the 17th for the 24th, also at five o'clock mm -hmm. as the second meeting of this, this group. Third, really third. Right. Put that as a, a you know, how to, a, put those as holders, placeholders right now. Yep. May 24th? 24th. So the 10th and the 24th, if the 10th doesn't work, well, then we'll have to figure out another day. Maybe it's the 17th. Okay. Okay. Just, Good. I'll, I'll, in the meantime, I'll also check and see if we're definitely on for the 17th. Okay. Okay. Uh, any other business right now at this point? No. Thank, thank you. Thank everyone for their time. And we look forward to getting the materials and you're going to reach out to Lauren. Yes. And Peter, anything you want to share with us, please. From I will. I, I definitely have some materials uh, I'll share. Um, actually, in terms of, um, in terms of uh, any open meeting issues, uh, is there an ability to have a, um, a shared file drive that the committee can access? Is that feasible, not feasible? No. Unfortunately, no, Peter. So my suggestion is if any member has anything they would like to share with the committee, send it to me or Tish and we can send it out. Okay. Uh, okay. And then um, yeah. when we send the information out, 
just so you understand, any course, any response that you have has to be to the sender only. Right. No serial. Okay. No serial communications. Correct. Right. Would okay. you like a motion to adjourn? Uh, sure. I will accept one. I move that we adjourn this meeting. Uh, Member Hyde moves that we adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Co-Chair Cahill. Vice Chair. Oh. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Lockney? Oh, I'm in favor. Hey, uh, <laughs> Hill? That was a Yes. Ms. Hyde? Yes. And I also vote in the affirmative. So we are adjourned. All right. Thank, Thank you. you all very much. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Take care. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye bye.